Okay, it's Michael here. Uh, gonna do a little video here on repair of these old tree turners. They have a, they're not like the color wheels where the motors are real common. These kind of have a pear shaped motor and on a bracket plate, and then they have a little gear cog and stuff. So I see a lot of these that are bad and they need no motors. So I was able to locate. A source of new motors but it still requires some retrofitting to get it to work but that's the point it works so and it's nice and quiet uh, the motors they look like this and they have a little gear cog this gear cog is not the correct tooth count or the size so what you have to do when you take it apart on your original motor take that little gear cog off that motor because what you're going to need to do i found on a lot of these it's hard to remove these and you end up just fucking the uh, shaft up so don't attempt it plus lots of times the shaft's not tall enough to reach through to, to line up to the gears down here on this that spins the coupler so you have to take a small drill in the center and drill a small hole down through it maybe like an eighth of an inch and then on the bottom of the gear cog off the, the that was in on the original motor if you're able to remove it off of there there should be a hole if it breaks off, then drill a hole. And what you need to do is set it on top of this with some JB Weld. Put a little JB Weld here and smack it on there. And then, Ben, you'll have a hole in here and a hole through the old gear cog. Get you a real small screw that's just a little bit smaller. You don't even have to thread it because when you screw it in, it's going to make some threads. Or you can get a real small nail that's just a little bit bigger, that's just the correct length, just a little teeny thing, and tap it down. And what it does is it acts as a secondary reinforcement, but the JB Weld will hold it just fine. So you set this aside with your original gear cog and motor, set it aside, let it cure for 24 hours. Okay, here's one that I've already fixed up for this. Motor, get this out of the way. As you can see, the new motor's on there. And you can see how I left the factory gear cog on there and then I welded uh, the original gear cog to the top of it. So it lines up with the gear teeth that's long enough. And basically, you may have to, on the underside here, I'm going to take this off. That's the coupler. You, you may have to do a couple little washers to space it down to get it to where you want it to where it's right in about the center. And you can see these old holly times. They got a safety clutch. So when they hit something, it'll roll up over it like that and then come back down. That's a main reason why a lot of these slip. If you want to put a stop to that slipping, you see the bottom of this and right on there, you can clean it up and put some like Velcro or you can JB weld it there permanently if you don't want to ever be able to remove it, whatever your choice is. But if you want to be able to remove it so you can pack it back away in the original box, I would use some Velcro. But that's that. I'm going to go with the video here. We're going to get this installed back in here. I've got it just temporarily wired into a cord off a piece of crap appliance. I did, you know, so it's wired up. You can see it works nice and quiet. So I'm going to unplug this because I'm going to unwire that. And it was that one. Okay. So it's unwired. We're going to undo this, get this loose, and we'll get it mounted in here. And we're going to get this all put back together so it's a working rotating stand. So I'm going to set this off to the side.
Okay. Yeah, I think that's good. Gonna remove the coupler. Of course, unplugged. No electrical current. We're gonna unwire these. This was just to kind of test it out, see if it was a good motor. I'll unhook all this. Hook all this. Okay. Straighten that all back out. There we go. That was just our test wire. Okay. So, we're going to get this mounted back on here first. Set this off out of the way. All right. So we need to position this on here where it lines up with the hole on the center plate. So I'm pretty sure this is the correct way. It wouldn't be that way, it'd be right there. down so it lines up let's make sure if I drill those out okay I didn't drill these one holes out a little bigger I need to do that damn it if I would have got the right size screws I wouldn't have to do this so but it is what it is I should have got metric three screws I got metric four so oh well I'm gonna drill these out a little bigger Sorry if I lost y'all. All right. Okay. Drill these other two out. There we go. those holes a little bigger for that okay it was this way all right now this part here will be lined up with the dead center so that's the way we want it so what we're gonna do there's four holes on the bottom of this pan we're gonna put four of these little screws through I'm gonna do one side at a time Come on, baby. They originally did uh, pop rivets on this, but you know, you don't have to do that. You can do nuts and bolts. Makes it a lot easier. So, to get it off. Okay. washer on there. Got to nut. Okay. Let's get over here and do this up and just get it threaded a little bit. Okay. Yeah. On the bottom. Do a little lock washer. Okay. And we're gonna do a nut. I get threaded on there a little bit. Okay. Now we'll come over to the other side. Try to flex this a little bit to get it to line up. It's all right. Jesus. 
We're going to bend that tab a little bit. Awesome. Huh, I don't know how that got bent, but okay, we corrected that issue. Try to get this. There we go. Right. Now we're going to do a lock washer. And a nut. Come on, damn it. Tell you what, you gotta have patience for this stuff. It's a virtue. Come on, baby. Right on there. There we go. Alright. We're gonna do another to the bottom. There we go. Let's go there. Put a lock washer and nut. Okay. Now we got those thread. We need to get those tightened up. So let's see here. What were those little Phillips heads? Oh. I can hold them with my finger. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to get tight with a, a pair of vice grips on the other side. Go. Bad nut on this one. Come on, baby. There we go. Okay. Put the needle nose vice grip set. There they are. I'm going to put a pair of needle nose on that nut on the other side. Kind of hold it. And we're going to do a final tightening. There we go. There we go. Okay. Okay. This does is make sure it's real tight. It's not vibrating. Vibration can give me noise. All right. Now we got the motor lined up. This is dead center. So when the coupler is put down on there, work. Need to get this wired in. So we have our two wire caps. And we're going to wire one wire to one side, one wire to the other side. So. Make myself some room here. Alright. This is the lead wire that comes from your outlet. So. Straighten all these out. Really don't need that much. There we go. Okay. One wire to one side. You always want to start to twist these. Don't don't ever trust these wire caps to do that. Then put a wire cap on. Okay. Then one wire to the other side. Always twist them together by hand first. Never trust a wire cap. Put 
that wire cap on. Okay. There we go. Alright. Usually I like to get a little electrical tape and ramp those, so I'm going to grab some of that real quick. Just as a secondary precaution. You can also fill the, the bottom of the cap with a little bit of hot glue. That works just as well. But I have the hot glue gun ready, so we're just going to do a little bit of electrical tape on each side. Wrap each one. There we go. Those are taped off nice. Right. Now, we're going to line the holes up. You got holes down here at the bottom and then holes up here. So you're going to line the holes up. There we go. And you're going to start nuts and bolts. Okay, do a uh, lock washer. Nut and bolt. I kind of like to go across, that way you don't slip off the whole pattern. Sorry for the boring video. But I'm sure everybody on the aluminum tree group 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 will appreciate this. Because I there ain't nothing on YouTube about this, so put another nut bolt through here. There's six of them on this. Let's line them all up. Patience is a virtue. Okay. My washer. Right. One more. Okay, all those are started. I just need to tighten them up. Oh, shit. Get a drink. Ugh. All right. Look at, get these pretty tight, so I'm going to... There Philip says. I'm going to take my little needle nose. Grab that nut. Go down. 
Down. One more to go. Point is to get these real nice and tight. Okay. Bring down. Four down. Two more. Come on, baby. There we go. That's why you gotta have tools. Tools are essential. Okay. One more. Okay. All right. There we go. We are all done. What I recommend is maybe putting some felt pads on the bottom so these screws don't rub. If you have a hardwood floor so the heads of the screws don't rub on your floor, just put some felt pads, you know, in between one here, there, there. It just lifts it up a little bit. Keeps the screws. We'll stick this uh, pad in there. It's on there. We're going to plug it in. I'm going to set something on top of it so you can see it rotate. We'll just uh, yeah, put that in there. That'll work. Plug this in. Alright. We're rotating. We're all back together. This is a working tree turner now with a brand new motor. So I'm going to conclude this 23-24 minute video but how to fix a holly time. Always make sure when you do any of this kind of work you unplug this stuff. Do not work on any of these motors with this stuff plugged in. Or you will get electroshock therapy. But you can see how quick, I mean not how quick, how quiet it is. And it's rotating at a nice, you know, 3 to 4 RPMs per minute. So, anyways, thank you for watching. And this got the original paperwork. Looks like it's from 1961. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful evening.